I want to talk about the enormous significance for free speech and for Trump of Elon Musk uh, sort of opening the door and letting Trump back on Twitter. Now, first of all, Trump isn't back on Twitter. He hasn't done any new tweets, even though he now can. His account is open. You can actually go there. You can follow him. One thing I find amazing is that within 24 hours, uh, Trump has accumulated 80 million, 80 million, I'm not kidding you, uh, followers. He's surpassed Biden in one day. And uh, when I told Debbie, he's like, uh, Trump is beating out Biden. She goes, again? <laughs> so that was a little bit of a telling reaction. Uh, now, I think that Trump should get back on Twitter. I realize that he might have made a deal not to do that. He's with the Trump media company. He has Truth Social. But here's my point. If you're running for president, how can you deny yourself this massive platform? Trump has about 4 million followers on Truth uh, Social. And I'm not saying people can't take Trump's comments over there and duplicate them on Twitter, but it's a whole different thing for Trump himself to take advantage of this massive platform. Let's remember, Trump doesn't really have the other platforms. He doesn't have YouTube. He doesn't have Meta or Facebook. So in my opinion, Trump needs to sort of Look, he can, he, can, he can stay with Truth Social and post there first. If it were me, I would post on Truth Social and then say, listen, two hours later or three hours later, that my post is going to be uploaded onto my account on Twitter. And that way, Truth Social retains the kind of exclusive, but Trump is at the same time, uh, you know, disseminating his very distinctive voice. Look, it's kind of funny. I, I call this um, uh, podcast the return of the king. And of course, people are oh, you saying to know you believe in monarchy? No, Trump is the king of Twitter. Why? Because he's the greatest tweeter of all time. The rest of us are competing to be the second greatest. But Trump is is in a class by himself. He has a kind of knack for it. Now, I think it's kind of funny that Elon Musk decided to let Trump on by having a poll. He, de he decided, let's let the people decide. And, and lots of people voted. I mean, several million people voted in this poll. And, and Trump won sort of narrowly. It was, at the end, it was something like 52 to 48. But Musk goes, there you go, Vox Populi, Vox Day, meaning the voice of the people is the voice of God. And so Musk sort of submits to uh, the result of the poll and Trump is back. Now, honestly, this is not the right way to think about free speech. Free speech doesn't depend on referenda. I don't have my First Amendment rights because a narrow majority of the American people decided I should. The founders had a much better understanding. Our rights are uh, unalienable. They're given to us by our creator. Majorities don't have a right to run over them. And uh, so I think with Musk, the interesting thing about him is that he's he's a He's not a true free speech guy in the sense that he doesn't, he's not a free speech absolutist. He doesn't believe that, listen, if it's legal, you should be able to say it. Rather, it's almost like he believes that there are Muskian standards for free speech. And it's a much wider parameter than was allowed before. And it's not as, it doesn't have the left wing ideological thrust that the old Twitter had. I mean, the old Twitter was basically, you know, we're going to ban you, censor you, shadow ban you, restrict you if you're a conservative. I mean, my own attraction on Twitter has just exploded in the last few weeks. And the reason can be put down to two words. Elon Musk. It's a whole different environment. It's not that they're promoting me. They're just not restricting me. And so, you know, we're delighted. I'm a big fan of Elon Musk because I think that what he's doing is, is great. But you have to remember that he, what he's doing is he's basically saying, look, it's kind of my platform. So I'm going to sort of set the guardrails. I'm going to say that these parameters, these are the parameters of what you can and can't say. Um, I think it's kind of funny. Somebody was lobbying Elon Musk to let Alex Jones back on Twitter. And Musk is like, no. And he seemed really dogmatic. So someone's like, why are you so dogmatic? Uh, and uh, Musk's answer was something like, well, you know, I, I lost a child myself. And so Alex Jones's insensitivity, I think he's referring to the Sandy Hook matter. But I mean, what a personal reason. It's kind of like, you know, I've had a traumatic experience. And so that's it for Alex Jones. Too bad for him, because had I not lost a child, the guy might have been back on Twitter. So this is how Elon Musk is. He's whimsical. He's obviously enjoying himself on the platform. 
And uh, what another thing I want to point out is that some people went back to Twitter's original banning of Trump. And look how ridiculous it is. Um, because Trump had basically said something like he wasn't going to go to the inauguration. Uh, he says, um, I'm not attending the inauguration. Big deal. But here's Twitter. President Trump's statement that he will not be attending the inauguration is being received by a number of his supporters as for the confirmation that the election was not legitimate and is seen by him disavowing his previous claim made via two tweets. So Twitter itself, in a, in a written statement of why they're banning Trump, is basically saying it's not even that Trump's non-attendance at the inauguration is by itself culpable. It's being interpreted by his supporters in a way to deny the election results. And so there you go. So the, the sheer arbitrariness of people like Parag Agarwal and, of course, at that time, Jack Dorsey and the other Indian doofus, Vijay Agade. Thankfully, all these characters have been moved out of the picture. But it gives you an idea of the kind of repressive regime that we've been living under in Twitter. And it's just a very bracing feeling now to have free speech on this platform. I, I did a tweet yesterday that was liked by Elon Musk, where I basically said, listen, it's um, Twitter is the place to be now. And why? Because it's a genuine free speech platform where you have real repartee, a real engagement, real debate. There's no debate on YouTube. There's no debate on Meta. Those are highly regulated bulletin boards. And I think long term, the future belongs not to the regulated bulletin board, but to the free speech platform.